everything started in the 70s with the um one from olympus a really compact small and beautiful camera the significant development of this um one was for sure the omd em1 mark ii which i used the, over the last years and now it comes the new omd em1 mark iii a wonderful camera and i checked it the last weeks Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Frank Fischer and I am an Olympus visionary from Germany. The last week I had the new Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III traveling with me. So I traveled around the world testing the new camera and I had a lot of fun with it. And today I want to present you a kind of story and a lot of facts about the new Olympus OMD. The most important things for such a video is of course cutting the hairs and getting a really nice uh, haircut. I've been on Lanzarote with the new EM1 uh, Mark III. Um, the first thing I've done was to have an overview from the top. I couldn't check it, check it on uh, Lanzarote as I would because I was there not alone. I was there with a photography journey and a group of uh, German uh, hobby photographers. And of course, the EM1 Mark III was not on the market already, so I couldn't handle it uh, public. But I used a half a day when the group was on a photography rally and I had a look to take the most and uh, best uh, pictures I could on Lanzarote. When I'm traveling, I'm not uh, willing to uh, have my optical filters with me when I have such a compact camera like the new OMD EM1 Mark III. And so I wanted to check the possibilities of the internal ND filter. You may ask yourself, why should I buy the new Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III? Just a year ago, I ordered the EM1X, or you have the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, and now there is the new OMD EM1 Mark III, and you ask yourself, why should I buy it? Yeah, you mustn't, but I want to recommend to buy it, maybe, if you have a few things you want to have with your own camera. For sure, the EM1 Mark III has a lot of functions which you know already from the EM1X. There is the internal ND filter, which I love, and there's the high, res the high, and there's the high resolution shot uh, handheld. And that's two great things you will love and you, yeah, I love it from the EM1X as well. The Team, Team and Fire uh, Natural Park on Lanzarote is also famous for his drum doors. And there I did some uh, video material as well as some pics. And the internal ND filter as well as the handheld shot is possible because the new E1 Mark III has a brand new um, processor. It's the TruePic 9 processor. The E1 Mark II has one TruePic 8 processor. The E1X has two TruePic 8 processors. So one processor is for the main photography and the other one is for all the um, calculation of like um, handheld, uh, high-res, and live ND. And now inside the new 
EM1 Mark III, there is a Trupic 9, so the Trupic 9 is maybe as powerful as two Trupic 8 processors, and that makes a lot of things possible in this small camera housing. The body of the new EM1 Mark III is extremely similar to the body of the EM1 Mark II. That means also that you can still use your battery grip, the BHL9, at the new EM1 Mark III, so you won't have to buy a new one. You can use the battery grip of the um, EM1 Mark II, and that's a great uh, opportunity. Of course, the journey has to go on, and so I also checked the possibilities and uh, yeah, the skills of the OMD EM1 Mark III um, at the people and portrait photography. Something the EM1 Mark III has instead of the EM1 Mark II and the EM1X, it has a really new and efficient autofocus module. So there is the possibility to have a real good um, face detection and eye detection autofocus, a lot better than the two other models, the EM1 Mark II and the EM1X. Maybe the EM1X in handling is much better if you um, take a lot of portrait pics. You know the battery grip is integrated and it's uh, yeah, it's really nice handling if you switch often between um, landscape and portrait format. But if you want to have a small, lightweight and uh, um, agility uh, camera with you by traveling or things like that, I'm sure the EM1 Mark III will be the right camera for that. Um, that means maybe my EM1X will be stay at home in the next weeks more often and I will take the EM1 Mark III with me when I'm traveling around the world. After I've been uh, turning around the whole island of Lanzarote on the hunting um, waves and, um, and uh, spots for the live ND filter, I am right back here nearby Timan Fire, it's the national park of uh, Lanzarote. And May you see the, yeah, you see the um, red volcano in the background. The red volcano in the background um, is a special one because uh, at the, um, the way around the volcano, there is one big lava bomb. Um, this is a, a, a former fluid um, stone, which was um, sp spied out by the volcano and landed nearby the volcano and it's still laying there of course it's no more hot and no, no, no more fluid and i will check there today in the evening the um, astro rf of the new em1 mark III. yeah you heard right the new em1 mark III has an astro rf so that means that you can um, autofocus the stars on the sky and if you ever tried this with an autofocus system, you may know that it's extremely difficult. And I'm really, um, yeah, I'm really happy to check this this evening. I will take you with me in the evening, and we will try to take some star trails with the Astro RF right there. I take you with me. Sure, one of the main benefits of the UMD system is the compact format. So um, I was always I was always loving the small cameras, the small camera bodies, as well as small lenses like this one here, this little um, um, 45 1.8, and that was the reason why I switched to uh, uh, Olympus a lot of years ago. And Maybe the new EM1 Mark III is more in the system than the EM1X. The one X is for hardcore um, in the field. And of course, it's great if you switch often between landscape and portrait, as, as I told you. But um, more likely for the system, for sure, the EM1 Mark III is. The EM1 Mark III has a dual card slot. One is USH1 and one is USH2. It has the possibility to shoot 18 FPS with AF and 60 FPS without AF. This is really high speed and I love it a lot.
different to the EM1X and the EM1 Mark II as well to all other UM, UMD models is that you can take time lapses with 9999 picks, so it's uh, 10k minus one. And yeah, this, I f think this is a really great thing because sometimes the 999, yeah, you have to start a second time and then you have a gap. And now you can choose from one, what makes no sense, to 10K minus one uh, picks for your time-lapse videos. And this is a really great opportunity to take great time-lapses, I think. The journey of the OMD EM1 Mark III has to go on. I was still looking for the best possibility to use it with his new functions. Therefore, I drove through the whole island of Lanzarote always to having a look at the best possibilities to use the camera. The dust protection and the heat um, doesn't matter. The OMD EM1 Mark III and so I had to go on to find a place where I can limit the camera, maybe. The first new features of the new OMD EM1 Mark III I checked on Lanzarote and now we are on Iceland. Iceland is similar to Lanzarote, but there's much more snow and much more water. And we are looking for the best possible photography spot for the new Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. Yesterday, I checked the um, internal ND filter at um, Oxarafoss. And we've been at the big geyser to have a look at the pre-capture mode. All pics you see in these videos are JPEGs from the camera because there is no raw support right now when I uh, uh, cutted this video because there's always no raw support before the camera is published. But of course, because of the small camera body, a few things integrated in the One X are missing in the One Mark III. Um, especially the sensors. So as you know, GPS and temperature and uh, compass and I think the height and things like that, I never use that a lot, but they are th these uh, sensors are integrated in the One X. They are missing in the EM1 Mark III. So if you need all this data within your images, you still have to buy and use the One X for sure. The image stabilizer stabilized 7 EV and 7.5 EV if you have a Sync IS with a lens from Olympus, which has an internal IS like the 12 to 100 and the 300 um, prime lens. And then you have 7.5 EV. I'm always impressed that it is possible to take pictures with a sh shutter speed of a few seconds. I took a lot of pictures in the last years with two seconds um, shutter speed. And I know from colleagues who um, used four seconds, eight seconds, or even 10 seconds handheld to take sharp pictures. This is really a great thing. I'm impressed that it is possible to um, get an IS with 7.5 steps. Now you see here the Icelandic geyser. Um, I filmed it with a time lapse. On the first pick, you can see the bubble, and with 60 frames per second, you can see the development of the bu bubble. The geyser is really fast, and then there is the explo explosion of. Um, water and dust. We went on to the Gulfos. The Gulfos, one of the most famous uh, waterfalls on Iceland. The warm 
sundown light was only on the top of the Gulfos, but you can see the magic color of the sun on the snow. Our target for the evening was Vik, the southern point of Iceland, and um, we and we hoped to see some aurora borealis to get some pics of the northern lights. And as you can see, it worked. One really powerful argument and one really nice thing is the new AF inside the One X. I think it is possible because of a new algorithm as well as because of the TruePic 9 processor. I don't know exactly, but I think it is that. The new AF makes a few things possible which were never possible before. First thing is the stars AF. So you can focus via AF at the stars. If it is night and you want to take some star trails or uh, astrophotography, then it is possible to focus on the stars with autofocus and that is really amazing that you can do that. The second thing is the new AF for um, eye detection. Of course, you know there is for a few camera generations at Olympus, there is the face detection. The face detection worked really well for me and I loved it uh, at my portrait shootings. but. Um, there was al always one thing when I, where I said, oh, that may can be improved. The first thing is um, you never could see at the display and at the uh, um, viewfinder which eye was detected. This is now um, possible because the camera shows you with uh, two um, signs, the face and the eye. And if you turn the face to 90 degrees, it is still possible, as long as the eye is visible from the camera side, it is still possible to focus on the eye and then it switch, switches to um, uh, face detection and this is really great. This is great for photography, but this is extremely great and powerful for video. The next morning we tried to take some pics of the um, stone needles near Vic and uh, getting nice pics from the sunrise. Okay, that was not the most beautiful sunrise I ever saw in Iceland, but we gave our best. Don't do this because it's dangerous near Vic. Um, have a look at the Atlantic Ocean, otherwise you will get in danger. It helps if you have someone with you who only had a look at the waves when you take pictures over there. All the pics made with the internal ND filter. And yeah, you can see the effect is really beautiful. And right now we are on a glacier, as you can see. In the morning we've been to Vic. In Vic, may you know, there are the big rocks inside the Atlantic Oceans. And um, yeah, we, are, we waited for the sunrise, but maybe there was one, but behind the clouds. And now we've been to the glacier, checked some um, high resolution shots um, made by hand. And now we will go further on to the, um, how is the, is the foss called. It's Skoga Foss, of course. It's the most famous um, uh, waterfall in southern Iceland. And maybe we will take there some more and deep pictures. Let us have a look together. Of course, you want to take a small walk on the glacier. It's a little bit dangerous and you have to have the right um, shoes and uh, 
the right equipment with you. The, the main target was still to take the suitable and uh, most beautiful pick which is possible with the EM1 Mark III. And so we tried the high res on the glacier and um, took a lot of glacier picks. But of course we wanna, wanted to go on and so we took a ride to the most famous um, waterfall on Iceland in the south. It's the Skogafoss. Also, the main wheel of the camera was improved. There is, as you know it from the One X and the EM5 Mark III, the bulb modus on the main wheel. That means that you can reach the lifetime, live bulb, live composite really quick by uh, using the B mode here. Also new are the four custom mode settings on the main wheel. There were still three, but there, now there are four. And the special thing of the custom menus at the EM13 is that you can combine the custom menus with um, configured super control panel menus. So the super control panel menu on the backside screen is, yeah, is combined to the custom setting. And that will help if you need quick adjustments in the super control uh, menu settings. One thing I loved most at my One X was the backside joystick. The backside joystick is, um, yeah, is the best um, possibility to use the AF field. There are still 121, and I bought a One X, yeah, because I liked the joystick so much to get a really quick, um, get the really quick possibility to change the AF fields. And yeah, the Mark III has the joystick at the backside as well. The shutter is also improved, so the shutter is the same that then at the One X. It's for um, 400k clicks, and it is possible to charge the accu, um, the batteries of the uh, EM1 Mark III, as well with USB-C. Um, this is really not the nicest thing to char charge batteries in cameras, but when you are traveling like me and you don't want to have a few um, uh, battery chargers with you, then it's really a nice possibility to charge the camera and the camera battery via the USB-C cable as well in cars. And uh, yeah, that's really a great opportunity. At the Skoga, we had nearly the ideal um, surrounding for the new EM1 Mark III because we had some water in the air, it was cold, it was icy. And yeah, it's maybe some of the best places to check the camera. But I had an idea and I knew the Cellulant Foss nearby the Skoga. There is much more water in the air, there's much more ice and we had a small trip to the Zellerlands as well. A lot of ice, a lot of uh, water and a lot of uh, yeah, nice possibilities to check the EM1 Mark 3. I tried to get up these uh, icy stairs. Of course, I had had the right uh, shoes, and so I got on the top of the platform. And it was a really nice look at the Zellerlands Foss. As you can see, a lot of ice and water. And of course, I thought here we can take the two best possible picks with this camera. This is frozen water and I took a high res shot handheld. And then I took another Andy handheld uh, um, filter pick of the whole Zellerlands Force. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, 
give a thumbs up and maybe I produce more English uh, language videos in the future. The big question is, should you buy the EM1 Mark III or not? Let me say it like this. If you have a One X, you will get not so many more functions. You will get the stars I have and the um, better eye detection, of course, and you get more frames for time lapses. But also you don't get all the sensors and the data with, with you, like uh, compass, GPS and so on. So you have to think about that. If you need a more compact camera because you are traveling a lot, then maybe you should buy the EM1 Mark III as a second body because the uh, yeah the handling is similar to the One X. If you have an older Olympus OMD camera, like the EM1 Mark I or the EM5 Mark II or also an EM10, then you make a big, big step forward by um, buying the EM1 Mark III. And now all of you who has uh, EM1 Mark II. Okay, you need to think about it. I can suggest to buy the camera or not. It depends if you need the new functions, if you need the new handling with the joystick, if you need a new body and if you if you love it, like me. I am sure this one will be in my uh, photography gear um, and in my photography bag in the future because I really love the EM1 Mark III. And I hope you will do it as well. Have a good time. And we will see again on this channel. Bye.